video, you're probably wondering, how do I do this extended technique on flute? Or this one, etc., etc. There are so many different extended techniques you can do on flute. And I know when I was learning them, there wasn't really a whole lot of resources out there. Like there's definitely some books and some articles, but I am much more like a visual learner. Like, I want to see the person doing it and hear them doing it. Um, and there just wasn't a whole lot of videos. I thought I would put my two cents in um, to kind of show whoever's interested the best I can um, how to do some extended techniques on flute. I do kind of have this as a part one, part two. So this is part one. Part two will happen hopefully within the next few days. If you're not necessarily like me and a video um, isn't really going to help you, I do have kind of a typed version of how to do all these extended techniques on my blog and I will post the link to that in the description box. In this video, we'll be going over flutter tonguing, harmonics, singing and playing, multiphonics, whistle tones, key clicks, and jet whistles. Let's get into it. The first extended technique that we're going to go over is flutter tonguing. Um, this is a very, very common um, extended technique um, for flute. Um, I mean, I've had it show up in obviously solo repertoire, pieces of piano, and even pieces that I've played in band have had flutter tonguing. Um, I think it was like the very first technique that I learned. Um, so we're kind of going to go over that. So the first way of flutter tonguing um, is to basically roll your R's while you're playing flute. So if you can go you basically do that minus the vocal sound um, onto the flute. This is a way that like not everyone can roll their R's. Um, so this way isn't necessarily possible for everyone. Um, and there is a downside to this way of flutter tonguing when you try to play in the lower register with this um, rolling your R flutter tonguing. Um, it's really hard to get a good sound in the lower register. It is possible, uh, but it is difficult. Um, so the other way, and this is the way that literally anybody can learn, um, is basically kind of more, it's back further with your throat and glottis and all of the fancy parts back there that I'm not going to get into detail. Uh, but the way I was taught about it was basically to imagine gargling water or to literally like go grab a glass of water and gargle. So if you know, if you go, that kind of noise, you're going to sound probably ridiculous, but it's okay. Um, and basically you do that again without the actual like vocal noise and you don't want that uh, uh, you just want the uh, uh, you basically do that once again with flute on the shirts it's more of a so now i'm going to demonstrate both of these uh, flutter tonguing techniques uh, with the flute i'm not doing it here in my apartment because i can't practice in my apartment but and I did film it on a different day, so don't be confused by the outfit change and setting change. But uh, here's the two examples of the floor changing. extended technique is harmonics. Um, it's a really useful tool um, when you're learning to play flute to kind of figure out like embouchure wise where everything is uh, as well as like hard passages. Um, I know in when I was learning Chantelinos at the very end of it, it has like a really tricky run um, which was made much simpler by using harmonics. Um, so basically to do harmonics you just finger whatever note um, if, it, if you're playing it in a piece of music, usually they'll have um, some sort of way of symbolizing that this is supposed to be um, harmonic. A lot of times it's a little like circle above the note, um, and a lot of times that is the sounding note. So for example, if you see an E flat um, with a tiny little circle above it, that's asking you to play an E flat harmonic that sounds an E. So what you would do for that is finger an A flat, that would be my personal choice, would be um, an A flat, and you basically would change uh, the direction of your air very slightly as well as using more um, to kind of get it so that it'll play an E instead of an A flat <laughs> flats <laughs> and there is like a whole scientific way of harmonics working 
um, which is something that I'm not going to get into into this video, but it is very interesting and something that I do recommend learning. Um, the basics of it, um, you have your like base fundamental note, um, and then with that note, you can play an octave up, a fifth up, and so on and so forth. Harmonics can also be very helpful for tuning. Um, so if you have like really super high passages that are just you know super shrill and sharp, um, using a harmonic fingering um, can help you with that. So let's get into watching me do it. Next up we have another super common um, extended technique, another one of like the first ones that I learned, and that is singing and playing. Um, and it's basically exactly how it sounds. You're basically singing while playing flute. Um, this can be done, you can sing the same pitch as the flute, you can sing an octave down, an octave up, or even like any note in between. Um, it is a lot easier to do just the same notes, just follow the flute with your voice, then hold the voice steady in the flute move, or the flute move and hold the voice steady. Um, but basically all you do is you literally just hum, so if you go, ooh, and then you put the flute up, ooh, and you just want to make sure you have your embouchure set so that the flute note will come out and you get this kind of cool metallic -y kind of rock sound. Um, it's used all the time. I think if you're going to play a piece with extended techniques, I bet there's probably some singing and playing in it. Um, and singing and playing uh, can also be really helpful when warming up. I know a lot of people have started implementing singing and playing into their warm-up routines um, just to kind of open up and relax the throat. Um, and oftentimes when you do this, if you were to play a note, just get the flute straight out of the case, play a note, okay, cool, do it with singing and playing, and then play the note. Oftentimes, the second time you play that note, normally it will sound much more open and free. Yeah, so you're basically kind of humming or singing the note. I kind of think of it more as humming than I do singing. Um, it feels more like a hum to me than it does singing. Um, so that can help as well. So, uh, and that's how I would also break down the exercises. I know I do it in the example you're about to see. Um, basically singing the note um, and then adding the flute with it, um, I think is the best way to go about singing and playing. So let's see that. Next is multiphonics. Um, these are difficult. <laughs> um, I first learned, um, first I learned were in my senior year of high school when I was playing the Great Train Race. Um, and I remember being so frustrated with them um, just because of how difficult they can be. Um, basically a multiphonic is when you play more than one note on the flute at the same time. There's a billion different ones. Um, but getting into how to produce a multiphonic, um, I think the easiest one to do um, is on a regular D fingering. So obviously you'll be able to get a high D out of it. So if you just play like normal, that's your high D. The other multiphonic that comes out of this note is C an octave below it. So if you just kind of relax a little bit more, um, you can get that bottom note to come out. Um, but this is kind of the way of figuring out the multiphonics. So they'll be written together. So in this case, it'd be the C and the D. Um, and you just want to practice getting both notes out first separately. Don't try putting them together yet. Just do them separately and make sure you can get both notes out. If you need to, um, sometimes, like for me, it's kind of hard to like even hear the other notes. So sometimes literally playing the regular fingering on both of the notes and then using the fingering that the music gives you and then getting both of those that way. And then <laughs> comes the fun part, putting them together. Um, and this was explained so many different ways to me and that just never really helped. Um, a lot of people told me, imagine the bottom note with your bottom lip and the top note comes out with your top lip. And I was like, what? That doesn't make any sense. Um, 
So what I discovered, first off, a lot of times for me at least, my Amish room needs to be a little bit more relaxed than it normally is. And that could just be a me thing. But the thing that I did find helpful um, that I was told is to focus on the weaker note. So you'll notice um, when you're playing a multiphonic and you're um, getting both of those notes to come out separately, one of them is probably going to be more difficult to get out. And that is the note you kind of want to focus on. So I'd start on the weaker note, just playing it normally, and then slowly kind of manipulating my air until that other uh, multiphonic came out. Um, and multiphonics are really finicky. Um, if it's a good composer, um, they're going to know and mark down the dynamic range that you can do this multiphonic in. Um, so a lot of the ones that are closer together, like a third or second, often really only come out if you're playing very softly. Um, whereas the one that I have been using as an example of the C and the D um, can be played very loud um, to come out and often it's a little bit harder to do it when it's soft. So this is a technique that took me like hours and months of practicing um, to get it. But now that I kind of understand how to do them, um, it's a lot easier when I see a new multiphonic to kind of get it to work. Um, but I still use that process of playing the two notes separately um, with the fingering, um, figuring out which one's weaker, and then focusing on that weaker one, and then kind of adjusting my air stream and embouchure as needed in order to get the second or sometimes even third or fourth multiphonic to come out. So let's watch the video. whistle tones slash whisper tones. A lot of times they're kind of like used interchangeably. Um, sometimes they do mean two different things, but they're usually pretty easy to do and can help um, when you're trying to learn like high register. Um, for me, a lot of times I was in a lesson and like I'd be like super tight and my professor would be like, okay, do it on whistle tones now. And that would just help my embouchure relax. Um, and then I would go back to playing normally and it would just be much more relaxed and resonant. Um, a whistle tone, like the name suggests, sounds like a whistle, um, is usually very quiet. You can do it on any note. I'm just going to do it on the C for this first example. Um, and you basically just relax your embouchure. So if you try just blowing across the flute without making a noise, you get kind of this airy wind sound, and that is usually what composers will consider to be a whisper tone instead of a whistle tone. Um, but the whistle tone kind of comes out of this whisper tone. So if you start with a whisper tone, and then just like barely give yourself an embouchure, um, a whistle tone should come out. So starting with nothing. See, there's a bunch of little whistle tones in there. Um, you also, when doing a whistle tone, want to want to use a lot less air. So when I'm doing the whisper tone, I'm using a lot of air. It's whereas when I'm doing a whistle tone, I'm, I can't even really give an example of it because here. It's just just barely any air. Um, and you can do it on any note, so if I finger it in high A. Again, it'd be really loud, I think you're breaking on them. Um, they are very finicky, just a very slight change in like air pressure or embouchure, or tongue placement can make the um, whistle tone move to a different note. Um, so it's just a matter of kind of learning how to control it. Let's look at the example. The next extended technique is key clicks. I personally love key clicks. I don't know why. I just think they're a lot of fun. Um, but they're also just really easy to do. Um, so basically, you might notice even now when you play flute, 
the keys make some noises when they go down. So basically, key click is just making this louder. Um, there's a lot of different ways of notating it. Um, usually it just depends on the composer. For, for like any extended technique place piece that I've played, um, there's been like a key from the composer that'll tell you what key clicks they look like. Um, so the best way to key click is with the stronger fingers. Um, so either using your um, middle finger or your ring finger. And that's literally all the key click is, is just slapping it down. You can do it with the other keys as well, um, but it's usually not quite as prominent. Um, and then with key clicks, you can experiment having the flute up and getting a different tone. So you can see just like covering or just moving my lips a little bit can get you a different tone. Um, also just straight up covering it completely. See, it goes down the octave. So those are key clicks. <laughs> Okay, the last extended technique we're going to go over in this video is jet whistles. And I say jet whistles as in like plural. <laughs> um, so I kind of didn't think about the fact that there's different kinds of jet whistles until um, I started learning Ian Clark's Hatching Aliens, um, which basically the entire beginning is different kinds of jet whistles. Some of them easier than others. Um, so. Um, at least in the case of Hatching Aliens, um, it starts out basically with just breathing into the flute. So you literally breathe out or breathe in. And that's just covering the embouchure um, plate uh, completely, making sure there's no air getting out. Um, if it's not covered completely, you'll know, kind of get this. That's not quite as pure. You can also experiment with tilting your flute in and out with these. Um, and then in the case of Hashi Aliens, even doing different vowels with it. So there's one where it tells you to go at thicky 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 on an inhaled breath. So those are kind of like a little bit more easy <laughs> uh, jet whistles. Um, but when you hear jet whistle, usually you'll think of this very powerful um, whistle, basically. Um, so in order to do this, there's kind of a lot of steps to it, which, again, I wasn't taught for a very long time until I saw actually someone else was being taught it, and I was like, oh, that's how you're supposed to do it, not the way most people tell you. A lot of times, like what I was told is literally, cover up all the holes um, and literally just cover the embouchure hole and just blow like as hard as you can and like sure that works <laughs> but it's kind of hard <laughs> it's really hard um so the way that i was kind of overheard teaching and i'm kind of taking now um basically uh, it's a combination of the vowel shape that you use your airstream and then actually moving the flute um, so the first part of it um, is actually keeping the hole covered and then moving forward. So kind of this forward motion, just a little bit. Um, along with that, you want your uh, vowel to go hoo e. So whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. basically is what's going to be happening. Um, and then you kind of add in the arms with it. You can also move your head with it to get more of a keeping the embouchure hole covered the entire time. So once again, kind of putting them all together. And then once you kind of get the motion of that down, you'll just do it again, but using more air, which I'm not gonna do in my apartment for my neighbor's sake, um, but you'll see it in the example that I do. And that makes the end of this video. Uh, hopefully you learned something, found something interesting, maybe gave you some ideas of new sounds you can make on the flute. Um, a lot of it is just experimentation and just having fun with your flute, seeing what weird noises you can come up with. 
So I highly recommend using these. Um, there's something that is becoming more and more common in uh, solo literature especially. Um, so I do think they're very important. And more importantly, I personally think that they're a lot of fun to do. Um, so thank you for watching. Um, hopefully you learned something. Uh, there should be a part two coming out within the next few days. Um, Self-promo, follow my Instagram um, as well as my blog um, over on my blog slash website uh, slash website part being more in the works right now. Um, but right now I do have a blog um, talking all about um, basically mental health in musicians. Um, so I kind of do a every other day blog of my life and kind of how I get through the struggles of that if that's something that interests you. Um, see you next time.